Hello, my friends. Uh, today's lesson is to answer a question from one of my students. The question is from a textbook. The textbook is Nelson Mathematics 11. And the question is <clears throat> The question is uh Question 9, D. Now, the student only gets a part of the answer. He has a little difficulty with one more answer because there are two answers. He gets one answer, but the other answer was not right. So here, I like to give you uh, the solution of this question. So the question is, you solve this part D, solve this equation to find what theta is. The interval of theta is given. It's between zero and two pi. Okay, let's proceed. I have written down the solution uh, in writing and I just want to uh, explain it. So the question is solve this trigonometric equation and the interval of theta is given between 0 and 2 pi. The first step is to move the 4 to the right hand side. So, minus 3 sine theta minus pi over 2 is equal to 6.2 minus 4, which is 2.2. Then the next step, divide this equation by negative 3. So you get this sine function equals negative 2.2 over 3. Sine of this angle, the bracket, sine of this angle is negative. Remember, if sine is negative, the angle, the bracket, the angle, the whole bracket angle is in third quadrant or in fourth quadrant. I just want to remind you that there is a rule called cast rule. The cast rule is C A S T. Cast rule. Cast, C A S T, which means in this quadrant, cosine is positive. In this quadrant, all is positive. In this quadrant, 
sign is positive. In this quadrant, tangent is positive. And the quadrant one, two, three, four is numbered this way one, two, and quadrant three. And quadrant four. Now, what we have here, we have sine is negative. Here, sine is positive. Sine is positive. Therefore, sine negative is quadrant three and quadrant four. So, this is what I. Written down. Uh, so let me. Uh, okay. So since sine is negative, so this angle is in quadrant three or in quadrant four. Then you want to find the angle. To find the angle, first you find the related acute angle. What does that mean? I have angle in quadrant three and quadrant four. So this is quadrant three and this is quadrant four. So the first step is not to find this angle or this angle. The first step is not. The first step is to find how big is this angle. And how big is this angle. This angle and this angle are called related acute angle. This angle is less than 90 degree, less than 90 degree. They are acute. So it's called acute angle. First is to find how big is the acute angle. To find acute angle, you do not use a negative sign. So you only do sign the angle in the bracket equals 2.2 over 3. That's how you find acute angle. So, this angle, this is the angle in the bracket. Uh, note that uh, the first step is not to find theta, is to find theta minus pi over 2. The bracket angle, okay? This bracket angle. And this angle is arc sine without the negative sign, so 2.2 over 3. And this you have to use a calculator. Set the calculator in radian mode. And the answer is this radian. So this angle is this much radian. This is the acute uh, relative a related acute angle. Then what is the angle? So you have this angle. So the angle should be measured from the positive x-axis. So the angle is from here to here. This is a terminal arm. So this. So this uh, the angle should be pi. From here to here is pi, pi plus the related acute angle. So, so the third quadrant answers should be pi plus the related acute angle, so which is this radian. From this, 
uh, because this number is this, theta minus pi over 2. Therefore, what is theta? Theta is this number plus pi over 2. So I have this number plus pi over 2. And then you use a calculator. Ah, uh, this is the answer. So theta is 5 decimal 5 radian. And this is the answer. Why I am so sure this is the answer? Because the theta interval is given. Theta is between 0 and 2 pi. 2 pi is 6 decimal something, okay? Pi is 3 decimal 1, 4. So 2 pi is 6 decimal something. It's between 0 and 6 decimal something. So this is less than 6 decimal something. So this is my answer. This is between 0 and 2 pi. So I get this answer from the third quadrant uh, discussion. Now, I have another answer which is in the fourth quadrant. So, the related acute angle is this. So how do I find the fourth quadrant angle? The fourth quadrant angle is this whole thing 360 minus this angle, or you can say 2 pi minus this, which means 2 pi minus the related acute angle. So, I have the fourth quadrant angle is 2 pi minus the related acute angle, which is this. And this is theta minus pi over 2. Therefore, theta is this plus pi over 2. Uh, use calculator to find the answer is 7 decimal uh, 0 something. But 7 is more than 2 pi. Here, my angle is less than 2 pi. 7 is more than 2 pi now. So this is outside my restriction. Then, how do I find the answer uh, corresponding to fourth quadrant? You subtract this theta because this is more than 2 pi. You subtract 2 pi. Why I can do that? Because 2 pi is a period. You know, if the angle at a period, it still satisfies the original equation. If you subtract the period, the answer is still good for the original equation. I can subtract 2 pi. I can subtract 2 times 2 pi, 3 times 2 pi. A multiple of 2 pi you can subtract, or you can add a multiple of 2 pi. But remember, I want my theta to be between 0 and 2 pi. So let's subtract 2 pi. I get this. Ah, this is between 0 and 2 pi. Therefore, this is my answer. So, the answer finally is what? Is this answer 5 decimal 5 and uh, 0 0.7, 0 0.7. So, this, these are the two answers you have. This, let's see, this thing, sign the bracket, Oh no, let's see. Yeah, sine bracket is equals negative 2.2 over 3. I can graph this sine function. Remember, this is the phase shift. And the theta here, there is no numerical number before the theta. So the period is 2 pi. Or the period is 360 degree. It's 2 pi. 
p u l is 2 pi, phase shift is pi over 2, and my sine function, uh, the value of the sine should be negative something. This is roughly negative. This is roughly 3 times 7 is 21, so it's roughly 0 0.7. Yeah. So this is roughly oh, negative. Negative 0 0.7. So I draw a sine function with the phase shift. Here. I draw a sine function here. Start from here and here. That's a sine function. And my period is from here to here is 2 pi. Because this is 2 pi, then from here to here is pi, and from here to here is pi over 2. Pi over 2 is my phase shift. Therefore, if there is no phase shift, my y-axis is here. But there is phase shift. The phase shift is, I move the sine function to the right hand side by pi over 2. So, move the function to the right hand side, to the right hand side by pi over 2, which means my y axis is essentially moved to the left by pi over 2. So, this is my y axis. And from here to here is pi over 2. This tells me that this is a minimum point. Yeah, pi over 2, minimum point. So, my graph is like this. And the value of the sine function is negative 0 0.7. So, this is amplitude 1, amplitude negative 1. Uh, no, 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 <laughs> not amplitude negative 1. Amplitude is just 1. Amplitude is always positive. This is 1. This is 1. The amplitude is 1 here. Amplitude is 1. So I want negative 0 0.7. This dotted line is negative 0 0.7. Because this point is negative 1, so this point is negative 0 0.7. Seven. So I draw a line. I have one answer here, one answer here. And this answer is 0 0.7. And this answer is 5.5. 5. So this is the graphical interpretation of the answer. So my student got, I think he got, he gets this answer, but not this answer. <laughs> because he don't know you can shift to pi. You, you can, uh, you can shift to pi. So this is, you can subtract to pi and get the answer. Yeah. So that's it for this question. That's it for this question. If you have any question, just send a remark to my YouTube channel. Yeah. Just send a comment. Uh, you can ask any questions. Okay, that's it for today. Goodbye. Thank you for watching.